Yo and hello everybody, Mike here, Baseball Collector. This is the day before July 4th, Wednesday, and half day today for the market, so easy day for me, and looking forward to a long weekend. I'm gonna take Friday off and just have a nice long weekend. But I got a package in today from Chris Sewell, and I'm pretty excited. We have orders at PSA of various sizes of cards, 50 to almost 100. I think we still have four orders outstanding. Uh, three of them are in the assembly phase, which by the way, has been taking a crazy amount of time. I remember when assembly used to take a day or two. Now it's taking a week to 10 days just in assembly. It's like they get the cards great and they just sit there waiting to be put into the cases. So, uh, I guess if you wanted to go do that as a job at PSA, you could probably do that, get a job pretty easily because they're behind on that. Uh, anyway, we, we got them. We got an order last week. Uh, we haven't shown it on a channel yet, but I've got some of the cards there that I wanted to keep for my personal collection. And Chris mailed those to me, uh, which is great. And I, I decided to keep another big card from a previous order that before I was like, eh, but I've decided to keep it. And I'm, I'm really glad that I did. And I'll explain that in a second. It's a really big card, like top 10 basketball cards of all time that I now own. And that, that's kind of been a, as I continue to work on different projects and things, for me, I think I like having a well-represented collection. I'm, I'm a, obviously baseball, 90 whatever percent baseball, but having key cards from football and basketball, I'd love to own a Gretzky rookie someday. I'd love to own, you know, the Bird Magic rookie. You know, there's just a lot of cards that are, you know, very relevant in the hobby that I, I think any card collector would want to own if they could. And I got one of those today that kind of rounds out the collection. So, or continues to add to the collection. I said, not, nothing rounded out yet. I got a long way to go, but certainly a piece knocked off that I'm excited about. Um, yeah, as these orders come in, I just get to kind of pick of the litter. You know, if I want to keep it, I get to keep it. And that's that's been the coolest part about the Grow Collection is that. Uh, so. Let me flip this around and show you the cards that I got from Mr. Sewell today. And uh, yeah, hang on. All right, here we go. Uh, orders have been coming back reasonably fast. I mean, certainly, you know, they put an estimated completion date and they've all been coming back before that. Uh, I'm still, I'm kind of just working on a Pete Rose run. I don't, you know, this is very, the fact that we have them, I wouldn't go out and buy these cards necessarily, but the fact that we have them, and I'm like, yeah, I'll add that to the collection. I, I think Pete Rose will get in the Hall of Fame someday. You got a little 69 8 OC here. I mean, I mean, I, it is off center, but <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I don't hate qualifiers, but I'd rather ju this just be a straight six, honestly, than an 8 OC. I don't understand what makes it worth putting the OC versus just calling it a six. I don't know. They didn't ask me, so, but there's that one. I got that Pete Rose. I got this one, PSA 6, 1973. So I got that. I got this awesomeness. I had an order where I kept a Mickey Mantle stand-up, and we got this one back, a three and a half. These stand-ups are so tough, but that is a really sharp card. You got this corner down here, but other than that, it's there's a little mark in the back. You know, other than that, I just, that's a great card to me. And it's Roberto Clemente. We have a bunch of other stand-ups coming back, of which I will probably keep several because I just love them. They're awesome. And I've never, you know, before the mantle, I never had any of them. About a 49 pl uh, play ball, 49 Bowman, Bob Feller, in a one and a half. And you always wonder on the one and a half, this is the first time I'm seeing these cards in person, other than the night we uh, saw them in Philadelphia. But I guess it's a one and a half because the corners being rounded, that's fine. You know, a card like that that's really clean otherwise is fine by me. And it keeps the price low, you know, because essentially I have to buy Chris out of these cards through trading. Like he'll keep cards and then I'll keep cards and we kind of just go back and forth. 
on that. Um, so that is awesome. T205 Gold Border Eddie Collins. This is my first Eddie Collins Playing Days card. Uh, it's one of the reasons I wanted to keep this, and I love the T205s. I absolutely love them. I like them way better than the T206s, just because they're more or ornate. Uh, the gold border really pops. Unless I mean, it, it, you get a lot of chipping, condition sensitive cards, but that's a nice clean copy of that. It's got everything you would expect on a two. Uh, yeah, love it. Got a Mordecai Brown T206, also a one and a half. And I've, I've already looked this card over because I have a buddy who might try to buy this from me. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to sell it. <laughs> uh, he knows who he is. He'll be watching this. I don't know. I may keep this, but I'm, I'm going to bring it with me to the national in case he wants it. But it's a one and a half for rounded corners. Centering is spectacular. It's got a little bit of a dirt or something there. It's got a couple of little things on the back, a little pink and black over there. But overall, super awesome card. This is my first Mordecai Brown card too. What a Zach Wheat rookie, T206. This is a three Piedmont back. And uh, yeah, that's I'm 100% keeping that one. That is awesome. So my T206 collection is actually getting pretty nuts. <laughs> I'm starting to get quite a few cards. And it's not that I'm focusing on it. I just happen to be, they're cards I've always wanted, you know, but I've been focusing on other things and these are just kind of coming to me. So why not add them to the collection? Pre-war is awesome. No question. All right. Last card is the monster for this order. And it's the 69 tops. Lou Alcindor, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, rookie, PSA 7. It's a big card. Uh, and this is me trying, A, happy to own it, glad to own it. And the truth is I, I need to make up some ground. I need to keep a lot more value to try to catch up with Chris. Uh, so I was kind of looking this over in terms of value and all that. Definitely off center, left to right, like almost every Alcindor rookie is. It's off center on the back too, same direction. But when we saw these, we absolutely thought they were at least sevens. Like if these aren't sevens, then something's wrong. Both of them got sevens and Chris kept one of these and I'm keeping one of these, they're having to be two. So we both now have sevens in the Kareem rookie. And I mean, he's, you know, legendary player. This has gotta be top 10 basketball cards of all time. If you, if you disagree or maybe where would you rank this in greatest basketball cards of all time. I mean, I would, I would obviously want a Jordan 86 Fleer. I would love, again, the Bird Magic, like I said earlier. I want a Julius, a Dr. J, a, a rookie. I love the Squire, what's that, 72 tops, I guess. And then there's a bunch of other, you know, I, I, I'd like a LeBron rookie. I don't have one. I have a Kobe rookie. Uh, I have a Dirk rookie. I have Luca. But, you know, adding these key basketball cards, to the collection it's just especially the vintage stuff you know would i want a wilt and a bill russell and all that sure um, but yeah there you go guys that is it for today again where do you think this would rank i'd love to hear your thoughts down below greatest basketball cards of all time we'll talk to you guys soon have a good one keep collecting